That's right, I have, and I know John's going to tell me I need to stop. But I want to share one more thing, because that's one of my, another favorite, basically, um, in, in, inside of mine, which is around individualization. And um, many people talk about individualization, personalization being a big deal in China. It's absolutely not. Chinese don't want to buy a personalized product. They don't want to buy this jacket, which basically I say, I want this stripe to be red and this stripe to be blue, and I make it only for me. No, because that's not how I choose a product. So, because to come to your question, people still want that it's, if it's just for them, right, it's not unique, because then Jonathan can basically do the same thing, and he does his preference. What the Chinese consumer want is do this jacket, make it a limited edition with only 888, and make this red. You have it sold out in like a second, whatever it is. Is something which is scarce, 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 so you, you can't buy it. And then you see basically Jonathan talking about it, saying, hey, I, I signed up that product, it's only 808, here I'm in this great jacket. Sells like crazy. Every single limited edition in China sells. Um, every single one. You will not see a limited edition in China fail failing, because how do they choose? It's, it's scarce. It's a famous brand. Jonathan got one. I also want one. Only one percent of Chinese population have, the, have this. Uh, correct, jacket. correct, correct. <laughs> and the individualized one, personalized. I mean, so many basic companies are saying we need to personalize it, and China wants to be individual. I want to be individual because only one percent can have it. If I individualize it and personalize it, everybody can have it. Only I have it because I personalized it that way, but everybody else could as well. Uh, so in that respect, I think that limited addition and driving scarcity is uh, like always a winning formula. Can I, can I ask yes. the last question? Sure. So is that universal Chinese behavior if you look at queuing theory in Singapore? <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is true. No, a, a lot. This is, this is, it, is, it is a good question. They, 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 um, because many of what I'm talking about is actually not only, only Chinese. I mean, people been typically uh, put up my, get my favorite chart. People then say, ah, oh, China. No, not China. <laughs> I think a lot of what I'm basically describing is, is universally true. I think the, the one difference, though, is, is indeed is the, is the volatility, mm. because that's different. So I think also trends towards health, right? Yes, mm. the Chinese have a different education of health, and maybe in a few years it will be more similar. Mm. But typically, if you talk normal, basically, behaviors, everything moves gradual over time, mm. whereas in China, it just moves horizontal. I mean, it's no, no gym, no gym, no gym, no gym, no gym. Everybody gym. Whereas in Germany, it's like every year, or US, every year, a bit more, a bit more gym, a bit more gym. And that, that China doesn't like any of those gradual movements. But, but you're right, it's not, not all of that is universally Chinese. <laughs>